Welcome to WTDC 17 here in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where I've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio today by Mr. Rashid Ismailov, who's the Deputy Minister for the Ministry of Telecom and Mass Communications of the Russian Federation. Deputy Minister, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now, Deputy Minister, I'd like to start off by asking you, the theme of WTDC 17 is ICTs for SDGs. What ways has your country been integrating ICTs in its development agenda? Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, our strategic goals, I mean, in the country, they're matching up, compatible to what uh, the UN has with its sustainable development goals. Will not tell you exactly 17, but most of them they're matching, including even the, as far as I remember, the one about the seas and oceans and so forth and so forth. We're so big that we can embrace all these 17. Indeed. Now, uh, how we're integrating that in the development agenda is, as a matter of fact, we've started, uh, in 2011, we've started the state program, which is was called Information Society. And most of the things that we are actually discussing now, after six years, I think we've started to implement back at that time. There were a lot of things which were you know, not integrated into one digital platform, so to say, but there were many things that we were doing, like uh, e-signature or e-government services. That's the programs that we started back so many years ago. They are now full speed. Uh, I mean, we have now KPIs that we're measuring our um, developing program uh, with uh, with the number, for example, of the subscribers for e-government services. And the number is constantly increasing, with which we see that we are in the right trend, in the right track, with the sustainable development goals, definitely. And what challenges do you face in implementing the SDGs? And how do you see the ICTs making a difference? I, I, actually, one of the big challenges is, uh, I was always telling about that. Back two years ago, I was making same kind of you know interview on the visas forum and i remember that i recall that one of the biggest challenges for us is the density of the population and the territory it's the biggest country i believe in argentina here you have the same challenges uh, a lot of population are concentrated in big uh, two biggest cities as well as i mean other biggest cities and then it's a vast uh, territory with a scarce uh, population and uh, low density and all in all they are still citizens of the country they cannot be ignored neglected so you have to deliver all the services that you are actually uh, as the government trying to involve the population into into these uh, small destinations towns and villages besides I believe that the complexity of this uh, kind of ICD projects needs a lot of financing. And financing is always an issue, not only for developing, uh, even for developed countries. I think the EU has the same challenges when it comes you know, to digital gap inside European Union or US. I mean, financing is an issue. Resources is an issue. Uh, each year, for the IT programs, we have increased the number of the um, students that we are preparing in the country for the IT and ICT uh, professions. And we still uh, feel the gap and the needs for these kind of experts. Uh, so I think these are all are common for most of the countries. However, what I've seen here is uh, that to, to many to many kind of uh, you know goals or you know projects, we have gone uh, quite a big you know uh, distance already, comparing with many other countries, especially in the government services in broadband. Uh, we've laid 250,000 uh, kilometers of fiber in in Russia. That's a huge project, actually. You can you know rope five times the globe with with this one. So. These are the challenges and 
So obviously infrastructure and capacity. But what policies and regulatory reforms do you think are needed uh, to connect the next billion? And of course, in, in, in your case as well, especially in remote and rural areas. This is an equilibrium, a balance between the global uh, regulatory uh, issues uh, that are undertaken here, for example, I mean, on the ITU level. And uh, at the same time, there is no a peculiar, a unique you know, solution for each and every country, also because of the reasons that I have already talked to you about. I mean, Russia is in this regard quite unique. And even inside the country, it's uh, sometimes difficult you know, to match uh, the needs. Uh, so it's quite complicated. And uh, the experience that we have in our country shows that, in the first place, you need to focus on the, on the accessibility on the network, on the basement for, for delivering these kind of projects and implementation of, of the goals that we're talking about. Uh, now, there should be a consideration of the digital gap. I mean, we uh, think, I, I was once on the UN conference about the gaps between South and North. As a matter of fact, our North is our South. I mean, North is huge in Russia. Uh, in territory of, of, you know, two Brazils maybe, I mean, all together, and the population is very small there. And, uh, you know, there's a gap between the developed, you know, cities like Moscow, St. Petersburg, and these ones. Um, the approaches towards the regulatory issues should be I think in the first place we have to put uh, the needs and uh, the satisfaction of the end users so that you know the government portal of the services should be very you know easy to handle and so far and so forth then a lot of education is needed to the government especially for the age person I mean we're talking about new generations that are very handy with uh, with the uh, ICT uh, devices and gadgets. However, I mean, the aged uh, population, which Russia is aging country, actually, uh, we, we need uh, to look, address all these problems and for the solution of these problems to this category of the population as well. And in terms of this particular conference, I wanted to ask you, what concrete actions would you like to see come out of WTDC to further develop the ICT sector? I'd like to mention that uh, I mean the, the the most important document for this uh, conference is the strategic plan of the ITUD and um, the regional initiatives that uh, the regional organizations have put forward actually and uh, then having considered all that they should be develop the unique approaches and uh, plan of actions towards the implementation of these strategic goals of ITUD. Um, a lot of things we believe are important, like coordination between different regional uh, initiatives. It's also about uh, uh, helping uh, the development of uh, network, which should be safe, secure, the security issues are actually very important. And then building an ecosystem with the initiatives that are coming from ITUD, building a good ecosystem for, uh, for all countries so that uh, there shouldn't be the privacy in order to, I mean, that in terms of accessibility to, to the network, to the services, to the application that are going to be developed in this new digital forthcoming era. Um, I think that, uh, according to our opinion, the declaration that has been adopted here reflects uh, a number of ideas and a number of initiatives that are also very touchy and close to what Russia has. Uh, I think that at the same time we need to reinforce our efforts to gain, you know, close uh, the digital uh, divide and the economical, you know, uh, gap that exists between developing and developed countries. 
there are a number of resolutions that are either to be considered, revised, or you know, uh, even the new resolution that are put forward. And uh, I believe that particularly we need to focus on efficient uh, usage and uh, the delivery of the spectrum. We're talking about the network of 5G as a basement actually for digital shift. Now 5G needs, uh, needs frequencies. Frequencies are in the first place uh, divided in ITU. Maybe, I mean, WTDC is not the right place to discuss the frequencies. However, I mean, from the point of developing, you know, the networks, this is actually the conference that we need to discuss. Uh, languages are the problems. Uh, we have seven languages. We think that they should be equally utilized. Uh, numbering. Numbering is also, I mean, these are all the resources that ITU has, uh, you know, the right to distribute or to decide. That means that in this case, all the parties, all the countries that are involved, uh, sh uh, their needs, uh, their wishes, plans should be taken into consideration. This is, it should be fair. And uh, we're concluding our interview. I just read a good expression. We are all, I mean, this is the revolution. There were several number of revolutions in the mankind, even without going to the deeper ages. Let's start with the English agricultural revolution. I mean, it, it boosted, it gave an opportunity to, you know, to increase the GDP, uh, to shift uh, uh, the society into industrial one. However, I mean, we had enclosures at that time and there was a saying, if you remember, that the ships ate the man. Uh, then, I mean, each revolution of that kind had their side effects. Now we have approached the level at least in ITU, that we should consider the risk that might, uh, you know, happen with the implementation of IITs. I mean, from the security point of view, what artificial intellect is is bringing to us as a mankind. I mean, we have been never challenged by anybody else uh, as a human being. I mean, here on the planet. Now, I mean, it might be so that we should consider that the one. This is, I think, that on this conference we're not. Uh, they were no fo not focused on that one. What kind of, you know, uh, risks bring uh, brings the uh, digital transformation? Uh, there are a lot of hopes and expectations when it comes to the increase of number of uh, job uh, jobs and uh, you know uh, improving the living conditions, decreasing the digital gap. However, I mean there are things and the risks that might happen, as, as in Portuguese they say, amanhã pode acontecer tudo, inclusive nada. So it should be so that it shouldn't be nada. It should be, you know, something that substantial that brings the positive sh uh, changes for the mankind. Thank you. Deputy Minister Rashid Ismailov, thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio. And we look forward to catching up with you again sometime in the future. Yeah. Well, Hope so. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks very much indeed. Thank it was great. You. Thank you.